Everyone, this three question with Allison Selmer. There we go. Allison is my first guest over the break. I have asked Allison Selmer to be on my podcast. She is, was in my UPenn course on laying the foundation for innovation education. You are a principal in Vermont, right? In beautiful Vermont. One of the nicest states I've ever been to. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's beautiful almost always. Yes. Always, it is such a beautiful place. It is like, I don't know what it, it seems like. It's fall there all the time. <laughs> That's what I, I just a picture of Vermont and fall all the time. And uh, I asked Allison to be on the podcast because the work you and your staff are doing uh, at your school is amazing. And I love learning from you. I felt guilty that I was the one getting paid to teach a class and I was learning so much from you, but I was still going to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> still gonna get paid for it but it was just like i just so i asked you to be on the podcast so allison thanks for uh taking time that's your first podcast that you've yes. had before right yeah. so yeah thank you for having me yeah and i this is and one of the things we were talking about before we even got on here was allison is just absolutely not just a phenomenal leader um but really incredible learner and that's what i really appreciated about kind of the process because you didn't just share like Hey, we do this and everything was good the very first time. <laughs> right? <laughs> no. And kind of shared like here's things that we learned, here's things that I would have done differently. And I just really loved it. So before we kind of get into, you know, the things that you're doing in your school, I would love to learn about some of your influences in education, uh, the people who have had an impact on you. So when you think of a teacher who had an impact on you, whether it was as a student, whether it was a colleague, who's someone that you you think of and why? Uh, let's see. The first person that comes to mind is Mrs. Petko. Uh, I think this was back in 1992 and I was in maybe fifth grade. She was the first teacher that uh, had invited a student that was unlike everybody else in our class. So I went to a very a public school, very big school in a suburban area and inclusive practices and inclusion was not mm -hmm. thing that we were familiar with. And so we introduced Courtney into our classroom and she was on the autism spectrum, um, nonverbal and had a one-on-one -on -one with her. She only would be able to communicate through a little like typewriter mm. piece of equipment. It, so all of this was so new to us and we absolutely adored her. She became one of my best friends. We had play dates. But I remember a very vivid memory of my classroom teacher doing a read aloud in front of the whole class. And we're sitting all like close together in proximity on the rug facing the teacher. And sort of out of nowhere, Courtney decides to bite Mrs. Petko. Mm. <laughs> and this would never fly today. But the teacher was shocked, didn't know what to do, and bit back. <laughs> so don't do that ever. But Don't do that. Such a moment of like, whoa. And even <laughs> me kind of jolted back and looked at the teacher and the teacher explained, you can't do that. Do not do that. She never did that again. Um, but that was my very first introduction of inclusivity and inclusive practices and, and inviting somebody that had a very different perspective um, on the world into our classroom. And so that was the most memorable teacher that I had. Um, <laughs> that's pretty, that pretty memorable yeah yeah it was a very interesting one so that, that that's a very incredible story and it's you know when you're saying 1992 i actually graduated high school in 93 okay. and it's like a fascinating thing to think about how different um yeah. even your experience was compared to like my experience like you know there is it was like a really different time in the sense that i remember um, like, I, I know this is gonna sound weird. I used to get smacked by some of my teachers and they would like call home and say like, yeah, we had to like, you know, yeah, that was and my parents were like, they had, they had like no issue with the teacher. <laughs> They're like, oh, when he gets home, he's going to get a double. Right. And it was like a interesting thing. And there's a, you know, it, it just, um, a lot of things have, have changed. And I think a lot of times, uh, there's, you know, I, I, I see a lot of conversations, you know, um, there's a concern that sometimes educators are not getting the support from home sometimes. And I think there's a, obviously a variance of factors on why that can be true and stuff like that too, but that, that connection to community. And I just, I think I really, like, I, I really appreciate 
um, that the teacher put you in a space where you didn't just learn from the teacher, but you were mm-hmm. put you in a space to learn from other people in your class, right? Like, is that something that really kind of resonates with you? Absolutely. And I think this teacher was putting herself out. She took a risk. This Mm was all of her colleagues in the building were kind of like, really, are you ready for this? Do you know what you're signing up for? And she didn't know what she was signing up for, but um, she, she was learning alongside us, which was really interesting too. Um, Yeah. I think that that's one of the things that um, I really love about teaching that class, which is kind of weird is the is the variance of perspectives and putting yourself in a space where I'm, you're not just learning from me. I'm learning from everybody that's, you know, taking the class as well. So I, one of the things that really stood out to me is just how incredible of a administrator you are. And I know you'll not say, yeah, I, <laughs> I know you won't say that. Um, and you are very um, cognizant to, always give credit to your incredible staff. And that was just really wonderful to hear, which, which is, you know, that's why I'm saying it for you instead of you saying yourself, because I think a lot of times I, um, I I know you, like I always talk about basketball and uh, my experiences. And I feel that the, when I used to ref basketball, one of the things I always talked about is if you're a great ref, people don't notice you. And it's the same thing with a great principal, right? But if you're a bad ref, (laughs) everybody notices you. It's the same with principal. So I just noticed, you know, like all the great stuff that you're doing um, that probably, you know, but you gave all the credit to your staff, which I thought was really, really powerful. So I'm like just fascinated. Like, how did you, you know, who are some of the influences you had? Like who, when you think of an administrator, like who's someone that you think of that really maybe helped you on your journey, had an impact on you. Maybe it was, again, as a student, you know, as a colleague, who's someone that you think of and why? Uh, Doug Cussius. He was my school principal. Um, when I was, when I first became a teacher, I taught kindergarten mm-hmm. and it was uh, my second year that he had like nominated me for teacher of the year. And I'm thinking, how do you do that in two years? <laughs> like that doesn't seem right. Um, but he was so like so in tune with every individual person's strengths that he had on his staff, on his team. And he made relationship building with adults look easy. And now I have learned by being an administrator, easy, right. but he was extremely caring and thoughtful and generous. And he also uh, trusted the adults in the building, the, the teachers in the building to do what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't kind of hovering on over us or looking over our shoulders. Like he, he let us do what we do. Um, so mm-hmm. I, I thought that was really great, but he was also very, visible in the building he was in and out of classrooms all the time just to say hi check in on everyone Hmm. he was approachable you could ask him questions and you could kind of take risks and feel vulnerable and put yourself out there with him and not feel like it was going to be judged or evaluated like he he just he was great so he is the reason that i became an administrator which was not something i was thinking of doing um when i well, so I, I started in design. So I got into education later in life. And um, the transition from design into education, I took the first job I could get. And that was a kindergarten position. And I was like, really, I don't know if I want to do kindergarten, but fell in love with it the minute I met the kids and had the classroom. And so my that was pretty much after my second year there. Um, Doug was giving me all sorts of different leadership roles um, as a teacher. So I became the PLC facilitator. I became um, the PBIS coordinator, so positive behavior intervention Mm -hmm. sports coordinator in the building. Um, He just kept kind of putting me in these situations and and giving me opportunities, I guess, to showcase some leadership qualities that I didn't know I had. And um, I think we also went to like a restore, not restore, a responsive classroom for leadership, uh, like conference out of state together. And that was really exciting and motivating. So he kind of got me into um, thinking about becoming an administrator. And then I did. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, one of the things you said, um, talking about like relationships 
like it's doesn't it's not as easy as it looks because and i think part of it too is there's a sometimes maybe a mentality that when you build a relationship with your staff with your students that once it's once it's there it's there and it will never go away but you know people go through things people have different you know challenges in their life and one day you know like i when you're talking about that i remember like one of my staff members we got along amazingly well until we didn't and i don't know what happened and you know trying to kind of like say like what's going on like what's happening and trying to connect and then it was just kind of interesting to think about that like as you're talking about that because there's sometimes that we just think it's like once it's set it's set but it, that's not a reality We're, everyone's human people go through different things and uh, i love when you talk about you know your doug the, the the principal the thing that i've constantly seen in this conversation asking people this question over and over again is that often um great administrators great leaders put people in situations that the people don't think they're quite ready for and it it forces you to level up it forces you to grow and maybe and even sometimes i think they don't see that they know you're not quite ready but you can be and it's it's just it, it's just something that pushes you and so i know that this is kind of modeled in your your writing and the stuff that you've been doing and I actually, I'm going to link, I hope you're okay with this. I'm going to link your portfolio, your blog um, in the description down below, because you're going to see Allison has some really great reflections. And so talking about, you know, being a learner, I know that you, you, I think when you told me you've been a principal for seven years, you've taught multiple grades, you've had different leadership positions, but if you could go back to that very first year of teaching, when you saw those kindergarten kids and you think about what you know now and what you were doing then, if you can go back and give yourself your first year teacher self advice, what would that be? First year teacher self, I would say um, time to reflect daily on what you've learned from the students. I did not do that enough. Mm. And I, I don't know if any new teacher would know to do that because you're just so excited and you're planning day to day. Um, and but really like and I think you talk about this a lot, being observant real and reflective mm -hmm. really um taking in what questions the kids are asking you and what they're giving back is in, in their um expressing of their learning what they got out of lessons that you've put together um so i would say time to reflect daily about the kids um i would say taking time it, it's it's not as fun but taking time to develop sustainable simple systems mm -hmm. start um i think i exhausted myself my first year i'm right. developing students individual portfolios as kindergartners and i was thinking oh when they graduate in fifth grade to from um elementary to middle school they'll take this great big portfolio with them and i was working long hours putting these portfolios together and i was like wait but the kids could have been doing this <laughs> why am i doing this right, so it's right. kind of like thinking about how much how much do you need to put into this versus how much do you need thoughtful, intentional systems that students and families can help help you um, along the way? So I think those would be life lessons I learned throughout the process of teaching. And yeah. I'm still learning them. I'm, I, I still think about them. I, yeah. Um, well, and it was a, like, it was totally embodied in your work. I think um, I'm known as obviously a guy who's really focused on innovation that that's been really important to me, how we kind of continuously grow and develop our schools, create them much better than what we ever had and that continuously being a process. But for me, that's always been, uh, the first thing you do is not necessarily look ahead, you look back and you think about what you learned, what you could do better, how you could grow. And I think when you lose those lessons from the past, you, it's really hard to move forward and you know create something better and so that that was what really stuck out to me was um how you're continuously looking back but taking those lessons um you know as a principal as a teacher as a student and actually applying them uh to continuously not just move your school forward but move yourself forward and i think that's always the first step in leadership right people follow your actions more than your words and so that's something that i really appreciate allison um if anyone's, if you're listening, if anyone's listening, I hope someone's listening. Um, if you're listening right now, 
Make sure you check out Allison's uh, blog. It's in the link down below. You can connect with her on different social media as well. Allison, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thanks for um, taking the class because I feel I feel like I grew from your reflections and from the other students. You were just absolutely amazing in the class. Well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed every minute of it and I can't wait for more to come. I love it. All right. So everyone, thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.